Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME, Section 8, Division 1, Subsection A, UG 29. Formula to calculate the available moment of inertia of a stiff inner ring and shell cross section. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. How to calculate the moment of inertia of a stiffener? So now the moment of inertia of a very simple ring type of stiffener. We just take the cross section like this. H is the width. T is the thickness. And moment of inertia can be given by T H Q by 12. So please remember that whatever is the width here, that is the cube. Okay, we are trying to do the cube of that H. So if the same stiffener, if I put it in a different orientation, I will not get the same moment of inertia. Right? And that is the reason stiffeners are put like this, not width touching to the shell. That is not is what preferred. We prefer having this ring welded like this. No? Thickness will be welded to the shell so that I can get higher moment of inertia. Right. So always remember that. Now, if I have a see that was very easy. If I have a single ring, you know, a rectangular. Now, if I have a T section then how I'll be calculating the moment of inertia. Okay. So first of all, I will be finding out the Y. Okay, That is the centroid of the first area, Y1. Centroid of the second area, Y2. The name are, might feel a little confusing, but it's very simple term. Just Y1, how I will calculate? Y1 is nothing but H by 2. Y2, H plus T2 by 2. Okay, That is the Y2. Next step, we'll calculate the area of these two. Okay, that is simple rectangle. Then with these Y1 and A1, I can get the centroid of this combined area. Okay, once I have the centroid of this combined area, my next activity will be to find out the summation of A1, Y1, A1, Y1 square. Okay, so if there are two areas, there will be two A1, Y1 squares. If I have additional area, then there will be three. So that, like that, you know, if multiple areas I have to find the centroid, multiple, so that is the reason we have used A N Y1 square summation of that. Okay. Now the first one, I1, the, is the inertia of an individual part, you know, like if this is my rectangle first one. So that is the inertia of the first one, second is I2, that is the top, the flange part of this T section. Okay. Summation of these will give us total moment of inertia. But this is just the moment of inertia. This is not the combined moment of inertia. Now, the combined moment of inertia, this is the formula. Summation of A1 or An Yn square plus summation of the individual moment of inertia minus C centroid multiplied with the summation of a n y n okay so this is the formula to find the combined moment of inertia of any typical cross section okay you, you can have now i type channel angle anything okay i will take one more example to give let us take one section you know many times if you remember in UG 29, there is another formula with shell also contributing as a stiffener because the shell part, which is given by this LE, how to find this LE code has defined it. We'll see that this part also can be considered as a contributing to the moment of inertia. So if this is what we are considering, then I need moment of inertia of this complete I section, right? So, LE 1.1 under root D naught into T. This is given by code. Okay. So, now we have LE. So, all the dimensions I have for this shape. Now, I can easily find out the Y1, Y2, Y3, A1, A2, A3, 
then the centroid of this combination summation of a n y n square individual moment of inertias and then combined moment of inertia by summation so this is exactly the same formula you know just by adding one more area that will take participants when we you know find out the summations okay so this is the final moment of inertia of this combined shape